Welcome back YouTube doing another champion concept video for you guys today and like always if you guys like my champion concepts would like to see more champion concepts or you have some ideas of your own please leave them down in the description like and subscribe to the channel and we'll get right into the video. So this champion here his name is Sung Liang uh, the twin tiger of Shirgan and down below I will post a reddit thread with my with the actual bio of this champion I know I've been talking to a lot of people who have been watching my videos and the one thing that they would like to see are some bios some just some lore of the champion so I, I don't want to fit them in the video uh, so if you guys want to go down and check it out I'll leave a description down below and uh, yeah so um, Sung Liang is a fighter class champion so similar to champions uh, like Riven uh, Fiora uh, Jin Zhao, champions of that nature. He is a full phys he is a full I would say he's a physical based champion. He's dealing AD. He has a little bit of magic damage built into his kit, but it's kind of like a like a Yorick thing where it's just kind of there to prevent him from being, you know, super, you know, super powerful with certain abilities. Um, but his main focus is being a laning powerhouse. And when I say that, um, you should think of champions like Renekton, champions like Jax, um, champions like Gnosis. These champions are very difficult to move from their lane. You need multiple champions to even, you know, uh, be able to try that. Uh, so that's, that's what I wanted to do with Sung Liang. He is a, um, appearance wise would come off, uh, of, uh, the Oriental type of descent. Uh, obviously you can probably tell that with the name, his design, um, the idea of him having his two weapons are these giant, um, like metal rods known as doom bringers. Uh, which will kind of be just kind of be explained in the in his uh, lore a little bit, but his his idea actually took for, I actually took um, a lot of uh, inspiration from a, a character in a game called Dynasty Warriors, which you guys haven't played that game. It's a very fun game, uh, but it takes one of these type of you know uh, Chinese ancient warriors known as I believe his name is Tashi Si is how it's pronounced in English, and uh, he would wield these two giant twin like rods. And he was a powerhouse in the military. So that's kind of like the idea of where I got his look from a little bit. But let's get into his first ability here, which is his passive known as Ironheart. Every ability Sung Liang uses grants him a temporary stack of tenacity. This can stack up to five times as a max. Will slowly decay over the next three seconds. Stacks, uh, his stacks decay similar to Jax's, uh, his uh, attack speed passive. I don't know why I couldn't think of what it what it was called uh decays through stacks instead of one um of all at one time that's basically what i was trying to ex explain what Jax's passive is if you guys don't know what Jax's passive is um the tenacity stacks from two percent up to five percent and like i said the max he can get at max level will be 25 percent total uh from five stacks so you're thinking you're starting at you know at the base level level one with two stacks of tenacity if you stack that five times five times two is ten so that's a pretty decent amount just from being able to auto attack um this kind of i i wanted to give him a pretty simple passive just kind of what else, what everything else that goes into his kit was very you know complex so this just makes it so it's like okay you know when you're fighting this guy you are not going to move him it's gonna be very difficult to actually get rid of him to cc him uh knock him up stun him things of that nature because of all this tenacity that he's able to build up just passively going to his passive first ability i mean <laughs> going from his passive into his first ability uh known as stance of the next side this has a cooldown of 14 to 10 with a range of 300 this is a three-part attack combo so when you think when you think of that think of like atrox riven sort of thing however uh with sung liang um he channels the the elder next size uh their, their greatest fighting stance which is this ability. Each effect is considered a basic attack except for the second part of this. So the first and third portion of this combo are basically just enhanced auto attacks. Uh, actually, very very good um, representation would be Jin Zhao's Q. It's very similar to that. Uh, so the first ability, he will uh, auto attack enemy champion or target, slowing them for 30% for two seconds. The second part is a skill shot. The center of the skill shot craters the earth, grounding enemy targets for four seconds. And as you see here, I made a little line. Uh, the green little circle is Shang Liang. This is sort of his skill shot range. And as you see, the skill shot range has a 650 range. The 300 range is basically just like, that's auto attack range for melee champions. Um, 
this little center part here, if targets are hit with the center area of the skill shot, which is from range is about 400 to 500, uh, this will cause them to be grounded. If you guys don't know what grounding is, look it up. <laughs> Basically, it's a effect that allows them to, they cannot use movement abilities. Um, so, uh, like I said, with a range of 650, and then the range, the effect range is from 400 to 500. Third auto attack is a knockback, which knocks them back about 200 pixels. This is a very just unique ability, gives them a lot of ability to trade. First, auto attack slows, makes kiting a little bit harder. Second one could end up grounding them or just, you know, dealing damage from afar. Third one will knock them back. This is good for just trading, wanting to push them back, kind of reset, or, you know, using that Q, that third Q for some playmaking. You can do some insect, you know, flash auto attack things. Uh, just knocking people under your turret, knocking them away from you. There's a there's there's, there's a lot of outplay potential in here. So I think this ability has a lot of um, very very high learning curve uh, for some crazy abilities. But overall, it's pretty it's pretty simple. Just I'm sure there there will be people who will find some very unique ways to use the uh, second and third part of this ability. Second ability, cryptic. Force. This has a cooldown of 18 to 14 with a range of 300, 550, and 300. Uh, this is the charging ability. Sung Liang pulls back his rods, charging a powerful blow, similar to Scion Q charge. Very similar to that. Uh, so when I put like a example, I just want you guys to think of that ex that ability or whatever that is as a sort of a, a back, sort of like as a base for what this ability would look like. Um, charges under 70% uh, deals physical damage to enemies in a fan radius in front of Sung Liang. Uh, charges over 70% deals uh, physical damage to targets, also stunning targets who are caught directly in the center of where both rods collide. Uh, so the 300, 5, 550, 300 range is basically 300 range on the sides and goes up to 550 in front of him. Targets who are caught in the middle are stunned and then also staggered. This is a completely new effect that I have created. Staggered, um, I think it's really cool. Any abilities not on cooldown when staggered are set on cooldown for 1.5 to 3 seconds. So think about that. You have an ability where you hit somebody and you stagger them. They can't use their abilities for these amount of seconds because all of their abilities go on cooldown. Now, if, if an ability is already on cooldown... It doesn't apply to that and also Sung Liang's CDR does not affect this ability doesn't you know increase it and enemies CDR does not affect this ability either so just because it's just because the champion has 45% CDR does not mean that this is not that this is gonna have a 45% decrease in its effect this is 1.5 to 3 seconds just depends on the level of the ability and yeah I think um, having an ability like this makes it really hard for certain champions to fight him think of uh fighting a riven darius fiora and aurelia champions like this akali um and if you're able to stagger them while they have some of those abilities off cooldown this could change the course of a fight very very easily also you can use it and it just doesn't do too much because somebody like riven where her cooldowns at you know at you know with 45 percent cdr 40 percent cdr are very very low anyways so they may already be on cooldown and you hit her with the stagger. It doesn't really do much. So uh, you have to be very, you know, choosy in where you're going to use this ability. Third ability has to, is a two-parter. Uh, Ancient Ways and Obelisk con uh, Collision. I don't, know, I don't know what I was going to say there. Cooldown of 24 to 16 with a, range of four, with a base range of 450. And as I said, this is a two-part ability. So the first part, Sung Liang summons two large pillars around him. One on his left side and one on his, one on his right side, uh, each with a 300 to 450 AOE effect range. Uh, both of these grant uh, Sung Liang bonus resistances when standing inside their rings that they cast. That's the 300 to 450 AOE range. Resistances are calculated from distance near pillar. So the closer you are to that pillar, the more resistances that you will get. Uh, these rings will overlap in the middle, which is about 150 range. Uh, in diameter, I guess. Um, this is the best area to to gain both resistances. Now, obviously, sometimes you're not going to be able to. Sometimes you're more beneficial to go to one side. The left side is going to be the armor, and right side is going to be magic resist. Sung Liang can reactivate this ability as a skill shot, 
forcing the pillars to collapse at a target location. Um, they would work similar to... Hmm. They would work similar to... I don't think there's an ability that actually would do this. Um, Heimerdinger's turrets is the only thing I can really think of. Whichever area that you, that you do this from, both of those obelisks will collapse in that target direction. So if you have one here and one here, and you're standing kind of up here, this one's obviously going to have a shorter range. You know, don't know what I'm trying to do with the triangle thing. But you guys understand what I'm saying. Um, so uh, they will collapse, dealing magic damage to targets who are caught underneath. Uh, and also creating an impossible, a impassable terrain blockade for a few, for a short time. So what this happens, um, you summon it, you get, you get a bunch of resistances, and only you. This doesn't affect anybody else. So it's only for Sung Liang. Um, then you can also reactivate it, knocks down the pillars, takes away that passive ability, deals damage, but also at the point of impact, the area that they kind of meet, there will be a rock uh, like blockade there for like four or five seconds. Uh, that they cannot get through so you can use that to block off you know pats in pats out just to throw down some you know some some weird terrain in the middle that way they have to walk around it um this gives him a lot of you know fighting potential just being able to stand his ground in the midst of maybe doing a 1v2 1v3 um even you know getting turret dove or doing the or during the uh turret diving himself i think a very good ability uh, cooldown could go up a little bit, I think, uh, just depending on, you know, what's going on. The, uh, the range, the 450 range is his cast range, by the way, for anybody who's going to ask me in the comments. That 450 range is where, where he can cast it. Um, and then we get into his final ability. It's called the Segu Strike. This is his ultimate. Cooldown of 180 to 130. Uh, and this Fissure range, Fissure, Fissure, Fissure. Never been, able to, never been able to say that word properly. Uh, 700, we'll get that into a second. This is a target skill shot. Target skill shots are basically point and click abilities. Uh, Nautilus Ultimate, Rise, you know, Rune Prison. Uh, these are point and click abilities. Um, Sang, um, Sung Liang ruptures the ground at his feet, channeling a fissure to crack the terrain in pointed target direction. So actually, this is very similar to how Nautilus's, how Nautilus's ultimate actually works. When you click and then it just shoots up, you know, water as it's following him. Same sort of idea. Upon reaching its target, will erupt the ground below, knocking the target up and towards Sung Liang's direction. 400 range is the max towards Sung Liang. So already, so this ability knocks him up, and then also knocks him towards whichever way Sung Liang is. Uh, reactivate when in range. Within this 400 range, think of it as you have to be in range uh, for Yasuo to be able to use this ultimate when someone's knocked up. It's a similar thing. Uh, reactivate to send Sung Ling into the air, slamming both Doombringer rods into target, dealing massive amounts of physical damage, and knocking target down, staggering them for three seconds. Upon landing, Sung Ling activates Sheer Gun Might, granting life steal on abilities for X amount of seconds. So, this ability could be used as a finisher. This ability could be used, you kind of want to use this as a fight starter if you can, especially if you're able to get in the middle of a few different enemies. So think about it this way. A good way to enter the fight, you know, you throw this down, you know, you fly directly onto that target. Maybe they're in the middle of like two or three enemies. You come down, that, target's just, that, that target is staggered for a few seconds. You don't really have to worry about them too much. You can then throw down your E, get all those all those resistances, and you also get life steal off of your um, off of your abilities. Very very hard to kill a champion like this. Think of like having a really strong Alawi that you're fighting against, and she alts, and then just keeps dubbing you, and just keeps getting more health back. That's kind of what the idea of this champion is. Um, some weaknesses that he definitely has. Obviously, outside of this ability here, he's pretty easy to kite. You know, not none of his abilities, you know, have too much movement on them. They're pretty, you know, stand still, do a lot of damage. Um, now, the problem is that he's going to be very, very tanky. Um, you know, you want to pull him out of his E or pull him to the to the incorrect side. Obviously, if you're an AP champion, you want to try to pull him, try to try to kind of circle around that physical damage pillar, that way he has to go over there, that way he's not getting any magic resist upgrades. Um, item wise, 
you know, right now, as of in season nine, you know, Black Cleaver, Triforce, either one of those would probably be a good start. And then just kind of building like you would for a Darius or, or an Alawi. Um, but let me know what you guys think of Sung Liang. Um, I think he would be a very good addition for the top lane, especially um, just having, you know, with most champions nowadays having, you know, a million different movement abilities. Having a champion like this where it's just, you know, old school, just I'm going to sit here, dig my feet in, and I'm going to fight you, and I'm probably going to kill you, and there's not much you can do about it. Type of feeling is back, I think, for this type of champion. So, like I said, let me know what you guys think. Um, leave a like comment down below subscribe to the channel as well if you guys like seeing this creative sort of content also tag some people in it if you guys want to see, if, if you guys want them to see this sort of content so we can get this stuff rolling and yeah thank you guys for watching the video we'll get i'll see you guys next time